sure this autofocus is in. I don't like this autofocus thing on the camera. It don't fully get it the way that I want it to. But I'm not trying to have myself look blurry, blurry the whole video, but regardless of what I look like in this video, I'm gonna release this video anyways. I don't care if I look blurry, but um, that's pretty good. But yeah, so um, as I said in probably a couple videos before, um, which video is that? Um, when I'm not here for video, you know, I said I wanna, I wanna come here. I really wanna be honest with you. I wanna be, I wanna be straightforward. I wanna be myself. Um, you know, and I feel like this is a vital step in my life. Sometimes we don't see the issues and the errors in our ways. The way that we think, the way that we've been brought up, the way that we've been taught, the way that we've been programmed. And, um, you know, I'm at the point I'm tired of the way that I've been psychologically programmed. Not things that are naturally in me. I can't be tired of who the Most High made me to be. I mean those aspects of me that I've garnered and or parts of me that if not checked it could be bad or potentially bad or I can give you examples of how things are bad already from these small inclinations that I have inside you know so first and foremost I wanted to break things down into series uh, I wanted to do uh, like a healing series you know a Israelite series where we speak about I speak about some things pertaining to Israelite stuff, culture, um, just us in America, all around the world, and just prophetic things that the Most High has placed on my heart. It's, it's a lot of things, you know, but <clears throat> I feel like the biggest thing that I need personally right now is healing. And, you know, healing isn't a snap of a finger thing, you know, it's a process. But once you acknowledge that, oh, I need to heal from something, or, you know, I... I need to change some things. Sometimes it's not a matter of we've been so hurt that we're psychologically messed up, but sometimes we're just psychologically messed up because of how we've been raised. You know what? No, but I learned that, um, you know, it's funny, like I'm sitting here at my old high school. So I graduated in 2009. Now I graduated high school in 2009. It's 2024 now. <laughs> Life flew like that, and I could just I could just remember just looking back and remember vividly where I was when I was a certain age, and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and because I didn't know or I didn't have that confidence, it didn't it didn't make me go out and do nothing. It didn't give me any passion or anything. So. Um, and I feel like I can attest that, like me not taking chances, me not shooting my shot. A lot of that comes from like when I was younger. So um, when I was younger, I didn't rock with people a lot. So I will always um, isolate myself as a child. So this is me as a child, meaning baby toddler, you know, hold on, I think emergency vehicle ride past. Oh, they riding that way. So I didn't like people. Not that, well, I ain't gonna say I didn't like people, but I don't know. It was just, it's just like I already knew not to give my energy to too many people. And I knew that as a toddler. <laughs> so you could search all around the house for me. Timmy gonna be somewhere in the cup by himself or maybe with his twin. Um, so as I grew up, there's lots of things that I've garnered that I feel like made me socially awkward. And, you know, because of my, not to say inability to not talk, you know, I had, I believe, a dumb spirit. And, you know, I had the capability of talking, but I, I refused to talk to people. I refused to, and I isolated myself. So that in itself made me socially different to the point now I'm in a special ed and we even getting SSI checks off of this genius child that just don't want to talk to people. You know, so as I grew up, it's become more socially awkward. You know, I hear insults from people, you know, just 
being in a special way you think as a child innocently looking at life <laughs> you know so you have children treating you a certain way and they're treating you in a way and you're you already know you're not that like they were, they were treating me like i was just slow because i was in a special way in some aspects i was slow but i was not slow and one thing I learned about being in a special ed is a lot of those special ed students that people be calling stupid and dumb and retarded, those are some of the most brilliant people on the planet. You know, so, and the Most High watches that as well. I just want to get that out there because I've been in a special ed and I've been treated just as the special ed students. Special ed students are treated terribly. Some of the worst treated people, this is why they have separate classes for them. Some of the worst treated people are special ed students, but there's some, a lot of them are very kind, they're very sweet, but they have abusive people over them, or you know, they have people just feeding them pills and medicine and, and trying to regulate certain things instead of just loving them. And sometimes all they need is love, you know, but, so that's something that I ain't really experienced outside of my home. And because of that, that made me socially awkward in a way where because of all the insults that I've heard over the years and even when I got into the regular classes finally and showing showcasing how smart I am I was treated even worse when I got into regular classes and when I still maintain high grades in the regular classes so now I'm showing I'm the smartest child in the class but but this all this stuff is pushing me deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into that reservedness so now over the years i'm noticing many gifts you know i could draw really well you know i can sing extremely well i started rapping you know i've been acting like playing around with acting and realize like i'm really good at this stuff and this is like 8 9 10 11 12 like really noticing the gifts that i have at this young age and this is before i've become older and i had a new spark for one to perform and want to do other things so man I I remember like being in the fifth grade you know just you know being in the fifth grade and you're in class and you got other students call you base head and crackhead and it's like you've done nothing to nobody for people to and of course this is how and I lived on the east side for about a year at that point in time in my life when I was 10 years old. The humans that treated me the worst was our own people. Um, you know, so there's layers to healing. And, you know, I feel like the most highs allow some experiences that I've had since being in the faith to help open my eyes to why those children were the way that they were. You know, so I have a lot to talk about. And... You know, I don't, I don't want to just make it, I'm going to let this uh, truck drive past. I hope you can hear me because if you can't hear me, I don't even care. I got the dead cat on here. I wanted to have the, the other microphone, but of course, I wasn't fully prepared and did not charge my uh, wireless microphones. But I was still prepared because I brought this one, but. But yeah, so. Now, 33-year-old me, you know, I'm just looking at those things as a child, you know, being in a special ed, being teased, you know, by a lot of people, just me just understanding, I believe, people's energies and how it work, and, you know, me going by the myth of being a, an introvert. So I believe that introvert, extrovert is a myth. And when we tie ourselves to one or the other, we take one or the other away where extroverts feel like they can't have a moment with themselves because they have to be the, I'm an extrovert so I, I I'm social I'm this so you know you need time to yourself but it's a balance because an introvert you're gonna need time where you need to be out but I'm coining this term introvert so that's that's even putting me deeper and psychologically into a place where I have to separate myself where I have to and I believe there are moments for that. I believe there are seasons for that. And I believe there's healthy moments for that. But I'm an example of somebody that's been an unhealthy introvert. You know, because when you start to isolate yourself or when you start to block off communication, when you start to reserve yourself 
once you start to hold yourself back once you start to do those things and we live in a world where you know i got three children i got people in my family loved ones i got you as my subscribers and viewers there's people that depend on me for things there's people that are looking to me to <laughs> you know my children they depend on me they look to me for for everything you know i think about that like how can I be holding things inside of me and I got people out there depending on me? How can I be an owner of three businesses moving like this? So now I'm messing up my business. I'm messing up potential clientele. I'm messing up clients that I've already had. I'm messing up relationships or rather business or professional or public or even private relationships, my personal relationships. You know, all this stuff trickles down to that. But I have to look at myself and be like, yo, what is my biggest issue what is my biggest problem my biggest problem that is holding me back from anything and everything and i know is this it's this thing more than procrastination more than um uh you know like a stagnancy like living stagnant is it, it's more nah man it's it's my ability to communicate and it's my problem with isolating myself from everything and everybody i've been like this since i was a baby i've been like this since i was little but it gets to the point where it's just like, yo, you know, all that stuff happened. And yeah, because of that stuff happening, because I've been hurt, because I've been teased, because I've been bullied, because I've been this and that, because I've been treated a certain way because of this, that should never hold me back from being me. Because regardless if I'm doing great or doing bad, somebody got something to say. So I might as well have people have something to say while I'm continuing and pushing forward and doing good things, you know, and... You know, I feel like the best thing in this season of my life I can do right now is mend all of the relationships that I feel like I have severed and that I have messed up or whatever I can salvage and, and, you know, just with the heart of repentance to the most high, just in other aspects of not getting to it, not handling my business, not doing what I need to do, not working the way that I need to work. And you, I'm an owner of three businesses. Like, what am I operating like this for? And, and like I said, if... And, and that's you and your life, like not not just money wise, monetarily. Not it, it could be your your personal relationships with family members and relatives. It could be your relationship with a partner or somebody that you with. It can be any of that, man. When, like I think of that, like if I'm not able to effectively, openly communicate, if I'm not able to be there, if I'm not able to show up, if I'm not able to be faithful and committed to something. Like consistently, consistently be committed and faithful to something. Like if, if I can't do that with the simple matters, with some of the simpler things, how is the most high even going, how am I even going to be in a position for the most high to bless me for anything further than that? You know, ultimately, you're not going to be able to be blessed with anything further until you allow the healing process to truly happen. It's, you know, you see this thing with a lot of men and women, you know, is they've been hurt by a man or woman in their past. And now they're so guarded from that that it could be a good person coming into their life and they're rejecting all the goodness because of what they've been through. And that's called, and that's basically not healing. You know, so I have many topics that I want to talk about. Many topics and I'm not going to make it in this, I'm going to make this series and I'm going to drop this I'm gonna drop it in this order, in that order. I might have a single father thought right after I release this, or at, right after I record this, I might have a single father thought that I might wanna record. I might wanna tell a testimony about what the Most High did in my life this week. <laughs> you know, I, I, it, it's, it's so many different avenues that I could go. That's why I wanna plot this out, plan this out, but I wanna, I wanna sporadically sit down and speak to you in, in hopes that something that I say can or say can be a blessing even in this video this is a man right now that has fallen many times but I'm getting back up this has been somebody that is tired of even this own this flesh and so much that I need to pick up my cross daily and die to myself that's what Christ charges us to do he says that if you can't pick up your cross deny yourself you're not even worthy of being a disciple and I know there's parts of ourselves that are negative and I'm going to point it out that my inclination to separate, segregate myself and not communicate. That is, that is a big problem of mine and I feel like I'm not going to be successful in anything if I'm moving like that. And the Most High don't want His children to move like that. The Most High, if, 
if I'm doing business for his glory, for the kingdom, then I got to go out there with the, with the kingdom mindset, with a kingdom work ethic, with, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I've been talking about a lot for years. A lot of people see the potential for years. A lot of people have been watching Timmy for years, waiting on what Timmy about to do. And look, it's like 13 years later, people still, what's, what's Timmy about to do? People, what, people wait, what is Timmy about to do? Timmy about to give the most high all the glory. This is why I want to come up here and I want to start talking about things that I'm going through. This is the healing series. And like I said, I'm going to throw it in a playlist and, and, and this and that, but I'm not doing nothing in no order or no anything. However, I'm moved by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. I got topics that are already wrote down. I got topics that are already outlined, ready to be spoken about. I got some stuff. I'm going to just bring my camera with me whenever I'm out. When I'm making my moves, making my runs. You know, I did, did a little planning and plotting today. Uh, need to do some reflecting. But I wanted to record this video because this, this is just me. This is me getting up. This is me taking a step. This is me doing something. You know, so... Um, and this is how I can, this is how I know I am healing, you know, when you're acknowledging it, but also taking action steps, you know, because like I said, those little things affect everything. It trickles down to everything. But now I see myself, I just, I just got to rebrand. I got to rebrand like my clothing business. I've done more in this past week for my clothing business than I've done in the entire time that I had it for the past three years. Like. This is one of um, my jackets. It's, it's a rebrand joint. It's not out yet, but um, I got some stuff out right now. But yeah, this is the, uh, the rebrand logo. <laughs> That's the rebrand logo. But um, yeah, man, it's, it's some good things happening. I thought I'd sit on the stairs at my old high school. I used to go here, you know, but that just shows you how far somebody can come. You know, how do I go from this? special ed student that don't really know much and not really communicative to you know going to one of the best high schools you know in the city i don't know where we are uh, where they at now but when i was going here it was one of the best you know so i'm pretty sure it's still similar um and you know just growing up and just all the drop out of schools and all the dead end jobs and you know baby mama drama and just like all you know just it's just all the failures and shortcomings and all the setbacks and all of it was my decision making and it's how I was psychologically geared and moving forward I'm ready to move forward in healing like just my life decisions should reflect the healing I shouldn't keep on repeating certain things certain financial decisions certain you know like we got to get to a point where if we healing once again the evidence should be there the number one catalyst for my healing process and journey right now is the Most High in Christ. That's the number one catalyst for my healing and why I want to move forward. Because how can I be used as a tool to bring about light and healing if I don't have light and healing in my life and in myself? So I trust the Most High that He's going to continue to grant that peace that surpasses all understanding. That's in Philippians chapter 4 and really just, man... I know personally, I gotta get into the word. That was, that was a problem of mine. So when I'm not filled with the spirit, man, and I'm just filled in the flesh, I just wanna do what the flesh wanna do. And sometimes the flesh just wanna sit off to the side and not do nothing and waste my time and waste my life on social media and eating junk food and, <laughs> and, and you know, and, and things that leads to lust and this woman or that woman or these people that aren't good for me in my life and certain conversation and certain things that the enemy just want me to feed into to distract me from what the most high is calling me to do so I'm a man that just want to live for the most high and that's it and um this is a step that I'm taking to healing so I hope something that I said is a blessing to you I gotta get going I gotta get moving but once again you have to figure out what is the corkscrew in your life what is the what is the biggest thing in your life that's holding you back from becoming who you are meant and destined to be? You are meant to be somebody. You are meant to do something in this life. You have a purpose and there's people in your life. There's habits in your life. There's an environment that you're in and it's holding you back. And 
the number one thing that people don't look at is what's inside of themselves. So we can look at everything else outside of ourselves. But the number one thing that's holding any of us back from anything and becoming what we're meant to be or who God has called us to be is us ourselves. And once we get to know those things that hinders us or holds us back, that's when we can take the proper steps in healing in our journey and just growth and just process of walking with the most high and sanctification and consecration and be more used by him. Remember, I'm, when I come on this channel, I'm not speaking to anybody. This is for set apart people. If you are set apart <laughs> for the master's use, I don't care if you call yourself a Christian, an Israelite, or this or that, Chinese, Mexican, white, black, whatever you call yourself or whatever you identify as, as long as you walk in, in the statutes of our Heavenly Father, you my brother, you my sister. Like, so like, when I'm talking on this, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. But anybody that, that you don't have to be in this faith to listen to this principle and take it in and be like, you know what, I need to heal from some stuff. But the number one catalyst to healing, like I told you, mine's at least, and I'm going to tell you the best medicine is Christ himself. The blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. I'm going to tell you, man, it's a, a cleansing power with that. That cleanses you from the inside out. It, it, it's it's life-changing. And, and it does make you accountable. It does make you look at, look at yourself. Look at your decision-making. Look at what you're inclined to do. Look at the things that, once again, hold you back. Look at the things that, that just ain't good for business. You know, so I'm acknowledging something about myself. And I will hope that this can push you and motivate you to acknowledge that thing. Because you have a thing right now. Rather, it's in you. And if it's not in you, then it's something around you. But if you are stuck in a place that is hindering you, then it's something in you that's allowing you to stay in that situation. Rather, it be a relationship or an environment. Things got to change in your life if you ever expect anything better. Sometimes in order for things to be built properly, you have to break down the whole entire building to rebuild on a solid foundation. And our, our solid foundation is founded on a rock. We build our houses on rock. We don't build our house on the sand. You know, so ultimately that's the main thing. You know, but yeah, when I get in my depression states or when I feel down or when I feel low, when I feel like I let people down, when I feel guilty of things, or like sometimes like I had moments when I was in sin or sinning. I isolate myself when I'm sinning because I just feel uncomfortable being around people. And you know, it, that, that ain't the right mindset to have. And even if I'm in sin, it's good to uh, admit my faults to people. It's good to repent about those things. It's good to have people to pray with me about these things. Because I know that there's healing in that. As it says, the, the prayers of a righteous man avails much. <laughs> So, and whatever the Most High has promised us, whatever His Word says and the Word that goes forth, and He will pr make sure that He will follow that Word to its completion. He will never let the work that He started with His handy hand <laughs> to go unfinished. You know, so, man, all praises to the Most High. But, yo, I, I really hope that this is a blessing to you. Once again, I want to make weekly videos. Um, I'm done waiting. I'm not waiting, rather I'm outside, rather I'm at home in my room, rather I'm in a, a production studio, rather I'm in my car. If I move to make a video, I'm gonna make a video and trust that Yah will allow whoever needs to hear this to hear this. But once again, it's, this was a testimonial video, but also opening up to deeper dialogue on things that we need to heal from, things that I need to talk about, and things that I move to talk about. You know, so. Praise Yah, you know, but um, I just rebranded the website. Um, my website, if you go visit www.timmyleaglean.net, you're gonna see a lot of um, stuff on that um, website. You're gonna see my clothing brand. You're gonna see, um, hey, what else? I got music videos, music. I have a gallery that I'm about to update, photography and things like that. So, there's a lot of things that's happening, but the, the, the online store, like I really put a lot of work in that and just really rebranding the, the God's will, but just rebranding myself as a whole and just really ready to like get back out here into this world. You know, I've isolated myself long enough and I feel like I've, I've tarnished a lot of relationships, uh, connections, 
and opportunities and I'm just ready to just right my wrongs and you know in my own personal life and whatever else I, I need to mend or whatever else I can salvage I will and whatever else I can't I just have to deal with the brunt of that and just take whatever loss that I take as a loss and I got to move forward but I got to move forward doing better you know my mistakes just like any of us our mistakes are our biggest lessons our mistakes is what help us to not do what we did before and if you're making the same mistake 10 to 20 times I don't want to use this term to sound mean but it's stupid and I'm not gonna say you're stupid I'm saying it's stupid <laughs> you know but I will say for my sake I was stupid when I make the same mistake knowingly that I'm making the same mistake over and over again you know but it's a process it's a journey to healing and I feel like the way the wind was blowing, I feel like this is probably going to be pretty hard to hear, but I hope that you you get what I'm saying, because most likely I'm still going to upload this, so. You know, all praise to the Most High, you know. It's funny, the timing. But all praises to the Most High, because He's given me life. He's given me another day. He's giving me a day to be accountable for myself. And I get to see myself clearly for who I truly am. So I'm thankful, I'm grateful, and all praises to him. And once again, whatever it is in your life, you know what it is already. What action steps can you take to, to change things? And if you can't think of anything immediately, man, just pray about it. Pray. Pray about it and ask for the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Ask for the most high to even reveal revelation through his word you know just allow signs wonders to just flourish in your life but you you have to be open to really receiving what the most high is speaking and communicating to you in these moments so but when he's prompting you to change something you should do it don't be like me and wait too long and it's stupid <laughs> i'm telling you you know so but it's a process we're all growing we're all learning we're all healing from something and rather we're healing we should be building in the process so let's continue to build on what we learn but may y'all bless you this journey about to die but yeah hope this bless you woo, woo, woo.